Welcome back. Good to have you uh, with me once again as we continue to grow uh, in God's wonderful word. We know that he meets us there. He holds us close. He builds us up in the one true faith. We know that um, we are seeking to grow tall in Christ Jesus, to grow as his dearly beloved disciples. We're in a little series here, God's Will in a Broken World, God's Way versus Man's Way. Um, our verse today is from 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. And this is actually the fifth part in this little one, or the fifth devotion on this theme. And again, the previous ones are uh, out on the website in the list of devotions uh, that, that this one is a part of. My name is uh, Director of Christian Education, Paul Went. I work for St. John Lutheran Church and School in Kendallville. In case uh, you don't uh, know who I am, it's glad to be with you in this medium. All throughout these, we recognize that Jesus is saying things like, for whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus invites us to believe, to embrace, that we are part of his family as we follow God's will in the power of the Holy Spirit. What a blessing. What a blessing. As we consider our passage for today, we look at this incredible promise at the end of our passage, whoever does the will of God abides forever. Do God's will, live forever. Wow. Sounds like a good plan. So I don't know about you, but the question then becomes, hey, what is God's will? Well, one of the ways uh, we can think about this is Jesus says this, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. God's will is to have faith in Jesus. Now, amazingly, the scripture tells us that that faith is a gift from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit creates the gift of faith in us through the gospel. What's that? That Jesus, who is the second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, took on our humanity, came into the flesh, lived a perfect sinless life that none of us can, died an innocent sacrificial death, willingly went to his death on a cross for us to pay the price we owed but could not pay was buried, rose three days later, and now lives. And the Holy Spirit uses that simple gospel message to come to us when we are spiritually dead and make us spiritually alive. It's God's will that we live in that gift of faith, that we live in that new life in Christ by the power and the grace that God himself provides. Our passage begins this way, do not love the world or the things in the world. We do live in a marvelous creation. There's a disarming beauty about our world if we care to look. God did create this world with great beauty and great mystery. Even in our broken world, we experience beauty and wonder. We experience it not only in creation, but in the creativity of human beings and the, the arts and the, even there's a certain beauty, if you will, to how science understands the world. We find it everywhere and nothing is really wrong with that unless we forget the God who created it all and try and replace him with what we're finding in creation. Now, the worldly system we live in seeks our allegiance, our devotion. It wants that absolutely. And our rebellious nature, unfortunately, wants to cooperate with the demands of that worldly system. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It really is a yes or no peace. It really is an either or choice. God loves us beyond anything we can possibly imagine. 
our loving Father desires to bless us. The world tries to convince us that living life according to the world's rules is the only way to live life, the only way to succeed, the only way to have what we need. Our loving Father invites us to live fully trusting him for all that we need, believing that in Christ he is going to provide that for all of us. Love God above all or love the world? It's an either-or choice. We consider again, whoever does the will of God abides forever. Jesus invites us to abide in him, to remain in his love, and faithful acts flow out of that relationship. That's the fruit of faith that flows in our lives. As we focus on Jesus, as we cling to Jesus, as we look to him, as we ask for his help, as we ask for his guidance, those things flow from us. The author of Hebrews says, hey, fix your eyes on Jesus, because he is the author, the one who creates, and the one who finishes or perfects your faith. As we do that, as we look to Jesus, as we think about him, as we read his word, as we pray, we continue to grow more deeply in relationship with him. And that's God's will for us as his people. He wants us to know him more and more and more. He knows us more deeply than we know ourselves. He wants us to come to know him. Our passage says, For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father but from the world. Our world has so many distractions that appeal to our rebellious nature. And many of them are really exciting and interesting and cool until they lead us away. People often try and convince us, just do it the way everybody else does. Do it the way the world does it. You know, hey, just get along with everybody. We really are in a battle. Our rebellious nature that wants to rebel against God, that says, hey, I want to be God instead. The worldly system that supports our rebellious nature and the demonic seek to draw us away from Jesus. None of this comes from God the Father. None of it. It can be a trap if we believe that the worldly system is the right way to live. We live in the world, not of the world. Our passage, again, whoever does the will of God abides forever. We know that a home awaits us, a home where there is no more pain, no more struggle, no more suffering, no more death, no more hunger. No more want. No more loss. A home with the Lord Jesus forever. That's permanent. On the other hand, and the world is passing away along with its desires. This is temporary. No matter how beautiful or magnificent the world is around us, no matter how beautiful or magnificent the, the creative, wonderful work of human beings might be, all that we see in this world is temporary. This universe is temporary. And again, we can enjoy those things as great gifts of God and take joy in them that way, always placing God in the center right? We recognize this other truth. Every human being lives forever. The creation will pass away. The question is, where will those human beings live? Either when they die on this earth or when Jesus returns. Where will those human beings live when creation itself goes up in smoke? And Jesus judges the heavens and the earth. 
Whoever does the will of God abides forever. This really is a way of life, and it's a way of life so that others might see Jesus in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. We walk with Jesus in that power of the Holy Spirit. Our lives become a channel of God's love and God's grace and God's mercy in a world that is in great, great need of it. We recognize that we're just here for a short time. Our stay here is short and it's temporary. We know that we will enjoy heaven. We pray that as we walk with the Spirit, as we walk with Jesus, others will come to see their need for a Savior by the Holy Spirit's power and that our lives may become the channel that God reaches through to bring them to faith in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bless and we praise you. We thank you. We know that there are many, many distractions around us and many wonderful and exciting and beautiful things. And yet you are the most beautiful thing, the most exciting, the most loving. Help us to fix our eyes on you through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Help us to know that as we do that, you will work in and through our lives, not only to bring us joy and peace and your blessing now, you also will work through us to bring your grace and mercy and love to the world. Help us, Heavenly Father, always to have this clearly before our minds and hearts. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So good to be with you. If this has been helpful for you, please feel free to share it with others. Pastor and I are here. We would love to talk with you or pray with you if you need that. Um, if you don't, uh, if you're viewing this because somebody shared it with you and you have no idea who we are, you can contact us uh, at the contact tab at sjlc.net. We would love to hear from you. And recognize we also, in addition to having things out on the web um, and streaming services and, and streaming Bible studies and so forth, we are also here in person worshiping Thursday at 7, uh, Sunday at 8, and at 10.30. We do have Bible study at 9.15 um, and with some Sunday school for children on Sunday morning between those. Um, and we would invite you uh, if you are inclined to be part of any of those things. Been good to be with you once again. Appreciate your kind attention and pray that as we continue to walk together as God's people, he will continue to draw us ever closer to him in Christ Jesus and to one another as his dear people that he has formed together in this place. We um, continue to seek to serve uh, our community any way we can with that love of Jesus Christ. Thanks so much for being here. Till next time.